Hi everyone, this is Cole Chance at Yoga TX. If this is your first time, nice to meet you. If you are back, then good to see you again. Um, wanted to let you know a couple things we have going on that I have new videos coming out every Tuesday. We also have videos coming out every Wednesday and Thursday as well. So be sure to subscribe at, uh, on our YouTube channel and also starting a new newsletter. So if you go to yogatx.org, sign up for that and I'll be sending all kinds of goodies out to you once a month and look forward to getting to know you better through that. So today I want to do talk about back pain. We all have it normally in some time or another. Some of it's chronic, sometimes it's more acute. But I wanted to do some things today that will help alleviate it and maybe keep it away more for good. I don't know. Sometimes it's just, it creeps in, it creeps in, it does. But some things that help core strengthening, it's not fun, but it really, really helps. Back strengthening as well, so we'll do a little bit of both of those and just some feel good stretches. But I have um, low back pain that comes and goes. I twist my back sometimes and I can get some spasms here and there. And these are just some of the things that I do to kind of help me through that. So hopefully they'll help you too and let me know, um, let me know if they do and which ones you like the best and stuff. I like to know if um, our bodies like the same things, so. Okay, let's start on our back. That's enough talking. Ah, even that feels good. So just let's lay down on our back. Let's have the soles of our feet on the ground and the knees up about hips distance. Go ahead and pick up the low back. See if you can extend the tailbone towards your feet a little bit longer and then drop it again kind of wiggle your hips side to side here. And just start to come into your body. Try to let the mental chatter go. Try to let the past and the future go. The breath only happens here in the present. So if you can manage to keep hold and keep attention on your breath, then it keeps you in the present. It is harder than it sounds, but it's a good goal to have. So let's start by just doing some rolling bridges. So you might bring the feet in just a little bit more towards your glutes. And I'm gonna start here. I think you, think you can see my low back naturally is up. So we have a natural curve in our lumbar spine. So normally the low back will be kind of up a little bit. So to start this, I'm gonna tilt my tailbone as if I was gonna wrap it up towards my belly button and drop my low back down to the ground. So it's kind of this coming in. And then I'm gonna keep lifting my tailbone up until I come to my extension, my full extension. And then on exhale, I'm gonna drop starting from up top, making sure the low back touches the ground. And then I'll come back into natural and maybe even a little past natural to get more of a curve here. So that's the movement. So let's inhale, low back down, tailbone up. And then exhale. So this is getting movement. This is also creating some strength and really just any articulation of the spine is so important. And coming back to center. Let's take the feet wide and the knees together and just windshield wiper the legs. So go side to side. Bring the knees into the chest and kind of rock. And then we'll grab through the knees. So we're gonna come into happy baby. So I can grab my ankles here 
or I can grab the tops of my feet and grab on the outside if you can. So I'm wanting to keep my tailbone on the ground. So how I'm gonna do that is as I'm pulling my knees down, I'm also kicking my feet up into my hands. So it's an opposite, uh, opposite action. So I'm pulling down and I'm also kicking up. And that's grounding the low back and the tailbone. Feels really nice, good in the hamstrings as well. It's all connected. All right, let's keep the left leg where it is and let's take the right leg long. So we're gonna be in half happy baby. If bringing it long is not, uh, doesn't feel happy, very happy for you right now, then keep that leg bent. So wherever you are, we're pulling that leg down. And then let's cross the leg over. So you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. We're gonna shift the hips over to the left a little bit and then drop the knees over to the right. So we're hoping to keep this elbow on, this elbow, this is a shoulder, this shoulder on the ground as we twist the knees over. If it doesn't happen, that's fine. But just think about that's the direction that it's going in. Any kind of twist is just so good for your back. Don't over twist, but um, just getting that spinal articulation. So even if you're sitting like in a chair at your desk, anything like that, just twisting kind of around um, your chair is wonderful. It's a movement that we don't make a lot. And if we do make it, we make it in a sudden movement that winds up hurting us. So some conscious twisting, I'm prescribing it. And let's come back to center. And bring the knees into the chest. And then take the right foot into this half happy baby. So either grabbing the foot or grabbing the ankle. And this leg can be, the left leg can either be bent or it can be straight. It'll give you a little bit more here in the psoas area. bringing that knee up if it's not already up and we'll cross the leg over shifting the hips over to the right and we'll twist knees to the left gaze to the right if it's comfortable for your neck and think about having that right shoulder down We don't want any pinching pain, anything like that. If you have any pinching pain at all, uncross these legs here and maybe just bring one knee on top of the other one. This is more gentle. So depending on, um, just depends on you. And coming back to center, knees in together, and we'll just roll out here. So bring the hands behind the head. I'm gonna bring both of the legs up. I promise this won't be too, too painful here, but we'll do a little bit of core strength. This isn't my favorite either, but it's good. Flex the feet as if you can press the heels up into, if you can kick your heels up into the ceiling here. So like we did earlier, bring the low back down. So you can either think about bringing the low back down or think about bringing the tailbone around to the belly button, whichever one visualization helps more. 
but let's inhale up and exhale we'll bring the right foot down inhale slowly bring it up using the whole breath to come up and then exhale using the whole breath to bring the left leg down. Not touching the ground, but almost. If you need to touch the ground, that's fine. It's something to work towards. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale. Noticing that the low back starts to come up, try to press it down. Just engages more of the core. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. One more time each side. And bring the knees to the chest. rock side to side. Sometimes this is the best back exercise. Just this. All right, so let's do one more here. So bring the legs into 90. We're going to bring the hands to uh, the knees. You could grab here or I'm grabbing like this, so fingers in. I'm going to bring the low back down to the ground again, bring the belly in. I'm gonna to try to bring the knees to my chest as I push the knees away. So my hands are like, no, no, you can't. And then my knees are trying to smash into me, so my hands are saving me. And it's a constant battle. And you should start shaking relatively quickly, pressing the low back into the ground. There's this internal war for five, four, three, two, one, and stretch long. <sighs> Go ahead and rock and roll up. And we'll come in to tabletop. So just kind of unwind yourself here. We'll do a little bit of back strengthening. So let's just take a couple cat cows. really exaggerating the movement. You can move a little bit as well. Do what feels good. Sometimes it feels good to turn one side to the other. And come to center. And let's take the right hand out, the left leg out. And exhale, bring together. Inhale, bring together, inhale, together, and plant, and the other side. Long, like someone's pulling you in opposite directions, and then inhale, or exhale, sorry, inhale long. Bring together and long, together, and long. Pieces come back down. Let's take a closed knee, child's pose. We we'll also call it rock pose. Bring the forehead to the ground, and let's clasp the hands behind the base of the head. This is a really grounding position. It's a really nice position for the back because it has a soft around. So really breathe into your back body and feel it rising on your inhales.
start to come out of it. And we'll just slither down onto our bellies. And take your arms long and turn one cheek to the side. And feel your belly press into the earth. And shake your hips here. Bring your chin to the ground. We're gonna bring the hands together on the back. Roll the shoulder blades on the back and bring the elbows like they're going towards each other, if that were possible. Press the feet onto the ground, the toes and the pubic bone into the ground. And on an inhale, we'll lift up. And as if you can take your fist all the way to your feet. And I just lifted my head really high up, but I shouldn't. You should look down towards the top of your mat so you're not cranking the head. And release. You can release your hands and plant your cheeks down on the other side. Coming back to center. One more time, locust pose. And this time, let's lift the feet as well. So instead of thinking about lifting the feet up high, think about shooting them long behind you. So same thing with the upper body. Start to lift. And this time, lift your legs as well. So as if somebody had grabbed a hold of my toes and were pulling me back. It's kind of the sensation I want. Another inhale. And exhale, release everything down. And shake your hips out here. Like acute um, back spasming or anything like that, then this might not be good for you. You need to listen to your body. It can be really intense when it's in this acute stage, but um, this is really good to do to keep it from happening. Okay, let's come into Sphinx Pose. So Sphinx Pose, you'll realize why it's called that in a moment. We'll have the elbows under the shoulders and then the wrist out in front of the elbows. So my toes are planted or coming down, pushing down into the ground. So is my pubic bone. I roll the shoulder blades on the back and I pull my chest forward. So in order to help me do that, I'm dragging my elbows back towards my body and I'm also pulling my belly in so when we're doing back bends we tend to just use the strength of our back and not of our core and that can dump all that pressure into the low back so every time you're doing back bends like right here feel the difference and let your belly go and then engage your belly and feel the difference here And let's go ahead and tuck our toes. Start to lift your hips and walk your feet forward. So the hands stay where they are. If you need to move your arms, your fingertips together, you can do that as well. So this is called dolphin pose. You can keep your knees bent here. So it's like downward dog, except we're on our elbows. This gets into the upper back here, the thoracic. So you're pushing the ground away with the elbows. This is also getting into the triceps. One more inhale. And release, come onto your knees. And go ahead and come back up. And we'll take a camel pose. So I'll show you, I'll do this to the side and I'll show you a different way to get into camel pose. There's a lot of different ways, but this one can be helpful. So I'm gonna come onto my knees. You can have your toes tucked or untucked, that's up to you. So camel, let me just show you real quick. Camel is this big back bend like this. We can really, it can, it, you can dump, sometimes if you're trying to get too much of a back bend here in the lumbar spine. And really what we're trying to do is open the chest. It's actually a heart opener. So here's a way that we can do this. Let's take our hands into cactus arms. 
and bend, stick your butt out. Looks a little funny, but. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to start to shift my hips forward as, my, as I broaden my chest. And then I can bring my hands back if I'd like, but I'm really thinking about the heart opener. To come out the same way you came in, start to stick your butt out and it brings your body back forward. We'll try that again. It's a different way to get in, but instead of just going straight back and bending at the, at the lumbar spine, it kind of helps to have a counterbalance, if that makes sense. So let's try that again. Let's come up. I'll do it with the toes tucked this time. So I'm, I'm up straight. I'm gonna cactus my arms as I kind of sit back a little bit. So now what I'm thinking about doing is bringing my heart to the sky. My hips are just gonna follow. I'm gonna come up, bringing my heart to the sky wide, and I'm in camel. Now I can bring my hands here. And then I start to bend back in. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and come to seated. And do a couple seated stretches here. Get into the side body a little bit, the QL muscle. So let's take the feet wide. They don't have to be real wide here. If you have a block, grab it. And if you don't, that's okay too, but I'll show you how to use it with the block. So the QL muscle is this thick band of muscle that goes from the bottom of the rib cage to the top of the hip bone. It's called quadratus lumborum. And that sucker can get tight. And that's the one that's always giving me all the, all the drama. So I'll show you one of my favorite poses to stretch that out. So I have my legs wide. You can also do it with one leg in if that's, if you like that better. Either or. So it's kind of this rainbow thing that we do a lot, but I'm gonna do it in a more restorative way. So you can bring the block here and you can rest your elbow on it. Bring this left hand towards the sky. And I'm gonna go up and over. So it's just kind of this rainbow stretch that we're used to doing. But instead, I'm gonna relax my arm here. And I'm gonna put my head in my hand. So I'm like ready to stay for a little bit. And it's opening up that muscle and it feels oh so good. So you might be able to do this on the ground here if you don't have a block. Otherwise, you can use a book or something like that. But I suggest getting some blocks. They're worth it. It brings the ground to you, which is really helpful. So just, oh, this is good. This is good. So the bigger you breathe, the more intense you feel that stretch. And you can stay here for a hot minute. Just think about like Laffy Taffy. Think about that being like, a, <laughs> like a, an angry piece of Laffy Taffy back there that you're needing to stretch. It's kind of like a myofascial, it slowly releases. And then slowly come back up. We'll do that on the other side. So finding whatever feel, however you can get uh, cozy and comfortable here. Bring the head into the hand. Bring this arm over. Now there's a tendency to kind of roll forward a little bit. And this isn't going, you may still feel it, but you're not, um, you're not getting the real juicy part of the stretch. So you really want to think about, again, turning this chest open. And then reaching over, and there it is. And another way to notice if you're, um, like if you're slumping in, this foot will want to slump in as well. So keeping the toes up. And this is, does not have to be a big stretch. We're not worried about the legs here. They're just kind of helping us balance. And whew, 
tighter on this side. Yeah, this muscle can be kind of hard to stretch sometimes. We use this a lot when we're lifting things, not bending our knees or we're like leaning forward with the upper body. It's this back, these are these muscles that we use. Like I do a lot of uh, massage, I'm a massage therapist. And when I'm working a lot, I think I'm, uh, I have to really watch my body mechanics because I have long arms and I'm strong. So I tend to lean when I need to be like moving my legs. And I'm sure that a lot of people do that in different variations. We try to cheat, but we're actually cheating ourselves and causing ourselves pain. So good. A couple more rounds of breath. And slowly start to come up. And I might stay there for, I don't know, quite a long time. It might get a little boring if I do it for 10 minutes on camera, but so you know, you can stay on there for a while. Go ahead and bring the legs. Let's bring them straight out. And let's bend the knees, or if you have a pillow or anything like that, you can put them under your knees. And let's inhale, lift, and exhale. Fold forward. So by bending the knees here, even if you can normally do this with legs straight, what it does is I start to round more with my legs are straight. Just, it just happens. So though I can do it, I have more rounding in my back, but if I bend my knees a little bit, it brings me closer to my toes and it's more getting in the back. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold over. And that's from wherever you are. So if you're here as well, inhale, we lengthen. Think spread the collarbone and exhale forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale forward. Go ahead and come up. We'll do one more for thoracic back here. Tee the arms. We'll take right arm up, left arm under. Eagle. Hands together. Let's lift. The heart up, elbows up, arch in the back, and then exhale. Ooh, bring it all in. So this is a really good one coming down. Tuck the chin, spreading the rhomboids. Let's go two more times. Inhale up. And exhale in. Inhale up. Exhale in. Inhale up. Then we'll switch sides. So right arm under, left arm over. Inhale, lift. Exhale. This is really good for the shoulders too. Both of mine just popped. It's nice that yoga stretches aren't like Yoga isn't like isolated movements. It's always good for many things. It's a multitasking movement practice. And let's open up. Let's just open up wide. So to your arms and open your collarbone. Exhale, round and bring your fingertips to touch. Oh, that feels good. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And close your eyes. Bring your heart, your hands to your heart or your heart to your hands. <sighs> hmm.
thank yourself for getting on your mat today and giving yourself some love and some self-care and some time for your back. A lot of times whenever we're feeling pain, it's our body saying, hey, you forgot about me. So give it some attention. Thanks for joining us. Cold Chance at Yoga TX. Namaste. Thank you all so much. See you next time. Your knees here and sit your hips back. We'll walk our arms out. And your hips may not come all the way down. You may be more like this and that's fine too. So whatever feels good to you. But walk your fingertips out so we're opening up underneath this, underneath your armpit. 